So today we're going to talk about self-talk. Has anyone ever heard, this is from Henry Ford, get out of the way. Um, whether you think you can or you think you can, you can't, you're right. Um, we're going to talk about how self-talk really shapes your destiny and like where you're going to go and who you are. Um, have you ever thought of the impact that your thoughts have had on others or about your, on yourself? The things you think, how in it changes your interactions with someone else or it changes the way that you look at yourself. Um, today we're going to talk about what self-talk is. Don't worry, Caesar will explain. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the importance of self-talk, the five different levels there are of self-talk, and then also how to use it. Beginning now, even in your everyday lives in college and long term. So, um, first of all, is anyone here a history major? No. Anyone visit libraries often? All my kids will raise their hand because they have to stay in the library from 8 to 5. Um, just kidding. So what are primary sources? No. First-hand accounts. First accounts. Exactly. Um, primary sources reveal personal information that's rarely contained in like books and articles of the time. So students, it's a direct link to the lives of people in the past. So pretty much like it's like an interview with someone but that's past. Um, what does this have to do with self-talk lists? Primary sources, words are the primary source when understanding someone else's thoughts. Have you guys ever talked to somebody and you realize you're like, they're like, talk is very negative and then you hang out with them and you're like, you're a really negative person. Or you talk to someone who's super positive and you hang out with them and their words are always like encouraging and uplifting and positive. Their thoughts, dictate their habits and their actions. It's a direct link to someone, what they're thinking, and how they live. Um, so what's self-talk? Self-talk, our first, first of all, self-talk is like the thoughts, our thoughts that turn into words. Our words then become actions. These actions become our habits, and the habits turn into becoming like our life. It's kind of cool. I thought that I read this and I was like, man, so everything that I think, if we think trash, we're going to produce trash in a sense, right? Um, and so we're going to talk about the five different levels of self-talk and the spectrum today. Um, kind of see where you're at um, and where you want to go. We'll set goals where you want to go. So, but first of all, just so you guys can see what self-talk is. I had an expert come in. Now, my whole house is great. I can do anything good. I like my school. I like anything. I like my dad. I like my cousins. I like my aunts. I like my Allisons. I like my mom. I like my sisters. I like my dad. I like my sister. I like my hair. I like my haircuts. I like my pajamas. I like my stuff. I like my rooms. I like my whole house. My whole house is great. I can do anything good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can do anything good. Better than anyone. Better than anyone. So that's my morning mantra. I just repeat everything Jessica says. No. Um, <clears throat> so self-talk. There's different parts of the spectrum of self-talk. So the first part is scarcity, when you feel like you're the victim. Um, we're going to talk about, this is kind of level one, level two, scarcity and victim. And then it goes to comfort with stagnation. We're just very comfortable. We don't want to branch out. We're just kind of, we're happy with where we're at. Not going to move farther. Second level is abundance, where we're grateful for the things we have in life, where we are, and we convey that in how we talk and the way we act. But, level one. Um, so the first level of self-talk, this is victim scarcity. This is where life is like, it's unsustainable. Like, it's too hard. This, we fill our language, like, in the way. We fill our language is full of, like, I can't. I'm not smart enough. I'm not a good student. Anyone say, like, I'm just not good at waking up early. I just can't do it. Um, and this is defining your situation in a way that makes it impossible to do anything else. 
It's where we can't break out because we already said that we just can't do it. I, Peter kind of explained a little bit, but I used to tell myself when I was in middle school, I was like, I can't run. I was like the girl in PE class that was like, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I like, it's funny because I told myself that so long. In high school, I ran track, the 100 meter dash. I can sprint, but I can't run. Um, but so this year, that was one of my challenges to myself. After Whitney's like, yep, said that before. Um, one of my challenges to myself was after I had um, ankle surgery, I was like, this is stupid. Why do I always tell myself I can't do things when a lot of times in life I've proved myself wrong? And so my half marathon was a way, yeah, I'd never run more than two miles in my life at a time. And those were probably like 15 minute miles. But I decided, like I set my mind to like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to commit to it. I'm going to start telling myself. So one of the things I did was I stopped saying I can't. Um, so defining your situation, so I'm still learning how to use this. Um, examples, I can't take early classes, I'm just not a morning person. I can't do chemistry. I can't do math. How many, how many times a day you guys would we say, or a week would we say, like, I can't sometimes? But the difference, I would say we don't have people, a lot of people at the level one, I can't self-talk, because that means that's all you ever say, really. I can't do this, I can't do that. You probably have people in your life where you know a few that are very negative and like always like, ah, I can't do it. But we always, me and my friends always joke, like, I choose not to. I choose not to. Um, I'm just not a good test taker. Talking about like, or talking about like, I'm not changing it. So level two. In level two, we use conditional statements. It's kind of talking about how you recognize there's a need, to a change, need for a change, but we never offer a solution to how to change. So that could be, I, man, I just need to get better at chemistry, but uh, I don't know how when there's a tutor that's free on campus. Or I just, I just need to get better grades, but I don't want to change my schedule. Like I have too much fun. You know, um, I want to, I want to be a runner, but I still eat pizza every day for lunch. I want to, I should, you know, I probably should take a shower today. It's been like a week, but I just don't want to. Um, I will try if maybe someday, hopefully one day I'll be very successful. Hopefully one day, like someday I hope to be debt free. It's never going to happen if you don't really envision and see it. I need to study, but Grey's Anatomy's on. It's always on if you have Netflix. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, oops. Um, I'll try to be there. Has anyone had this where someone's like, hey, we're having a party, you should come? They'll be like, I'd try to be there. And how many times do you actually go? Hmm. Whitney, how many times do you go? Hmm? How many times do you actually go if you say you try to be there? Uh, I don't know. Not. Like, if I try to be there, if I have something else that's going on, then I'll definitely say I'll try and I won't go. There you go. It's the way that we let ourselves off the hook, right? Pretty much already decided we're not going to. So this is level two. And what is not being said in level two is like the key. Um, it's talking about, it's the most common level that people are stuck at is actually level two because we always like a way out as humans. Um, it's easier for people to get stuck here because it sounds convincing that there's no real decision made, but it makes you sound better. Like, oh, I'll try to be there. Yeah, I don't think I'm going, but that's harder than, to hear than, oh, I'll try to be there. I'll try to make it. Um, fear is really what's holding us back because we aren't sh sure of if we're capable of even living up to our word, right? So it's like, this is what we call the airport test. So um, Peter and I are going to the airport later. We're going to Chicago. We have some meetings. And so I asked Thomas, I go, hey, Thomas, can you bring us to the airport? He goes, sure, I'll try to bring you to the airport. Around 10. <laughs> it did not happen. It's an example. So how many of you guys would wait for Thomas to pick you up when he said he'd try to be there? How many of you guys would play on other arrangements? Already did. Um... <laughs> Gabby's bringing us. 
Um, and she committed. <laughs> so the idea of level two is you're just not locking yourself in because your fear is that you won't be able to fulfill it. Um, oh, this is a good one. Always with you what cannot be done. Hear you nothing that I say. You must unlearn what you have learned. All right, I'll give it a try. No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. This is a perfect seg segue into level three. It's talking about, don't say you're going to try. Actually do it. Define the action. Start with a definitive time instead of but and drop the conditional statement after it. So when I decided to run my half marathon, I decided I'm going to run my half marathon. The big thing I did, the definitive, was I changed the way I talked to myself and I signed up and paid for it. So do something that defines that you're going to do it. Like, I will. I will get to bed by 11.30 tonight. I will. Some people tell me, they're like, oh, I just can't fall asleep. Tell yourself, like, I will fall asleep by 11.30 tonight. I do. I go. I will be there. It's commitment. Um, I'm going to do my homework, and I'll be done by 6. And then, so I'm going to do my homework at 3. So then when you get to 3 o'clock, you say, I do my homework. I am a good student. So you turn it into making yourself, if you still haven't started the action, you turn it into a way to make yourself start. Um, level four is kind of cool. It talks about between like the confidence and a, comfort and abundance, the status and impact. So between where we're comfortable and we have plenty, it's kind of like right in the middle because it's not it's like working on defining yourself. Like, what kind of person goes to class and does his homework? I am that kind of person. Like, I am a good student. Have you guys thought about it? How many times do we tell ourselves we can't do something before we even try? Because we're just not that type of person. Someone told us something and it stuck with us, and so we repeat it over and over and over. Um, this is something that I learned in the... Peter explained a little bit what we do in the summer. But I realized this when we tell ourselves, have you ever had it where you meet someone for the first time? Or maybe you go into an interview and you drop your pen and are like getting your pen and you're like, oh, they already hate me. Or you're thinking things and you're like meeting someone for the first time and you're like, wow, that person looks really cool. And you meet them and the, the conversation's really short at first and you're like, oh, they already hate me. We're already defeating ourselves with our thoughts. And that's how we project through our actions and our words. So this talks about, like, if I go to an interview and I drop my pen, I say, huh, I am really cool. They love talking to me. I pick it up, and I'm just, just feeling yourself like I am a great interviewer. I was talking to you when we were talking about getting ready for the interview. Do you remember me telling you this? Yeah. I'm just like, I'm really good at interviews. Everyone loves me. But it doesn't always mean it's true. It's what I've told myself so many times that I've come to believe it. Um, I always used to tell someone, I'd be like, yeah, if I got an interview, I already got a job. But it's something you build by saying it multiple times. It comes from tons of practice. Um, I am a great student. How many of you guys' self-talk could benefit from saying this? I love studying. I am a great student. I study eight hours a day. This might be a lot. Um, your past is irre irrelevant. A lot of times I think that our tendency is that we think, well, I tried in the past and I failed. The last chemistry test was horrible. So this one has to be a lot better. But then in your brain you're thinking, well, if it's anything like the last one, it's probably not going to be better. It doesn't matter. I am a great student. I am great at chemistry. Using I am statements. Muhammad Ali. Anyone know of Muhammad Ali? He's one of my favorite examples. So he, He's a cool dude. Um, I'm going to explain. So Muhammad Ali, when he was like 11 or 12, I was reading about his biography, he was in his neighborhood and someone tried to steal his bike. 
And he's talking to a police officer, and he's like, I just want to beat the person that was trying to steal my bike. And he was really mad because of the corruption, and he was just like, he didn't grow up in a very nice area. Um, and Mohammed, he goes, he, the police officer said to him, he's like, if you want to beat someone up, you have to take up boxing. He's like, with the way you are right now, you lose. Like, don't even try. And he was like, huh, that's a good idea. And he did. And that was one of the things, like, Muhammad Ali, he was not, like, a super big person in the beginning, but he took up boxing, and he built himself up. He believed that he, he visioned where he wanted to be. He wanted to be a great boxer. He wanted to protect himself and make something of himself because he grew, he grew up very poor. He says his self-talk is some of, like, the coolest because at that time, he said, I am the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. And many boxers know he was the greatest. Um, I'm so fast that last night I turned off the light switch. I was in bed before the room was dark. I like that one. Um, and he talks about, like, it's the repetition of affirmation that leads to belief. Once that belief becomes a deep conviction, then things begin to happen. Anyone ever had it where you're like, oh, I just don't believe it. Like, I know it's fake, but just keep doing it. Um, Chelsea talked about it, like, I have in my mirror every morning, I have note cards with things I want to say to myself, because I'm going to direct my brain to the thoughts I want to think that's going to make me successful one day. And you know, I might not be where I want to be yet, but it will happen, because I've told myself thousands of times, and I already know it will. So the rep repetition is going to create the belief. Um, and then level five, level five, this is awesome. So this is a level of gratitude and abundance. It's a level where it's defining yourself through your connections with other people. We're going to talk about some famous people through history that, are new, that were very good at this, but like the language is like, I am. Like, I am kindness. I am love. I radiate love to everyone I talk to. I am love. I'm selfless. I put other people first. Um, I am brilliant. That one. Haven't believed that one yet. Um, <laughs> I am courage. I am strong. Um, Gandhi. Gandhi said we must be the change we wish to see in the world. Um, so be the change. Like, do you guys remember Obama's campaign? And it was like, hope. What was, the, what was his slogan? Ch change and hope, right? And... He never took like a stance on it, but it allowed people to relate like, oh, Obama is going to be the hope. It was, like, it was like implied, right? Gandhi says, be the change you wish to be and to see in the world. Like, I am the change. I am the difference that I want to see in the world. Don't keep saying, oh, I wish I could change this. I wish I could change that. Be the change. It starts by saying, I am the change. Um, my religion is kindness. The Dalai Lama, I am kindness. I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Famous people always said it, but it comes to repeating it, believing it. So this is an example of what um, we did a little humorous approach of a killer self-talk. So this is every level. Level one, an example of level one is I can't stop killing people. Level two, I need to stop killing people. I would if they would stop or they stopped bothering me. I will let people live. <coughs> I'm a good person. I'm happiness, I'm joy, I'm goodness. You see how I would say that there's not anybody at a level one here because they probably wouldn't be in lead wanting to get better. Maybe, actually maybe, but I'm sure they'd progress from level one to two by now. Um, being around the culture of change. Um, so uh, I want to like pose a question like, where are you guys at? What level would you guys say you are? Um, you have to start somewhere. So what can you do now to get better and to move up to the next level? To apply things in your morning routine. Chelsea, what do you do each morning?
five, five positive things this morning to start your day, right? I am a good student. I am smart. I am great at test taking. I am whatever you want. I am the change I wish to see in the world. Um, write down three things you're grateful for every single morning to start your day. Kind of needed something like this, right? Well, kind of. We were done five things. Yeah, it's kind of. Working on it. Um, this is really powerful because when you're grateful for something, like how when you're focusing on the good, how can you like get angry about the person that cut you off when you were just saying five things that you were really thankful for? That you had a car that was still running, that you had gas in your tank, that you had a job, that you got to go to school when other people didn't. Come up with five things. Um, and assess your day and write down three things that you're going to accomplish today using level four and five self-talk. This is like Jedi advanced right now. So if you don't understand it, like talk to me after. It's okay. Um, and so I encourage you guys, take the time. We're going to go back to this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an assignment. Um, take the time to think about this and apply it into your life. What is something you can do? And we're going to talk about this in small groups. We're going to branch off into tables. And I think, Amy, you need to come back here because you're always in the same table. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we're going to talk about this. But think about in a group, talk about where do you, what level do you think you're at? Where do most of your words, like where do you kind of fall? And then secondly, what is something, um, and if you guys want to later, I can show you that list of things. What is something you want to do now? to work on the next week to get better and to increase your level into a higher level of self-talk and really like bringing yourself up in the areas you struggle. So, cool.